Did the judge make the appropriate decision in this case? He didn't go very easy on Fonnie Willis in his ruling. So he reached an opinion that I think is uh, is well-reasoned. Um, he said, basically, there is no actual conflict of interest here. He does not find that Fonnie Willis was financially benefiting um, from her appointment of Nathan Wade. What he said is that notwithstanding the fact that he did not find sufficient evidence of an actual conflict of interest, he was concerned about mm -hmm. the appearance of a conflict of interest and that mm -hmm. the public watching these proceedings as they unfolded would be worried about there being a conflict of interest um, if uh, notwithstanding what the evidence um, established in court about the relationship being over between Nathan Wade and yeah. Fannie Willis that the public watching might think, well, what if it restarts? And what if, in fact, there is some financial benefit that she realizes in some way, shape, or form from continued travel with him? Um, and if the reimbursements are not split 50-50, for example. So he is basically saying, mm -hmm. I'm concerned about the public's perception of the legitimacy of this proceeding, which is extraordinarily important, um, as it goes forward. And for that reason, he said, we can't have both of these individuals involved in the prosecution team. I'm giving you the yeah. choice. One of you is going to leave the team. And I think appropriately, Nathan Wade then stepped down. Well, I'll tell you what, Judge McAfee, as I said, didn't go very easy on her. He refers to her unprofessional manner uh, as a witness at the hearing in which she described her relationship uh, and then went on to describe an odor of mendacity that remains. Why would this person be kept in front of a trial if that's the case? The language that you're citing is really extraordinary in this opinion. I mean, I've, I've, I, I can't think of another time that I've seen a prosecutor described um, in such terms. So it's, uh, uh, if I were finding Willis, an odor of mendacity means that she lied, doesn't it? I'm not sure exactly what he means by that phrase, to be perfectly honest. But it's not good. It's not good for any lawyer, and it's not good for the elected district attorney. Um, in Fulton County, who's in charge of such an extraordinarily important historic case. Um, he yeah. did find, however, and I think it is important, um, that he did not see any way in which Donald Trump or any of the other defendants in this case had been prejudiced in terms of the fairness of the proceedings. He didn't think that their due process mm -hmm. rights had been in any way violated. So he did take pains to point that out. Um, that's why he didn't dismiss the indictment as a remedy. But he clearly took Fonnie Willis to task um, in those portions of the opinion that you refer to for her unprofessional conduct as a witness on the stand and also for her errors of judgment. He called it terrible judgment um, in hiring Nathan Wade um, and engaging in the sort of fast and loose uh, approach to documenting um, how costs were split between them when she should have been aware um, that her behavior would be under the utmost scrutiny. Jessica, I need you to help me understand what is happening in New York, where what appeared to be the one trial that would take place before the election now appears to be inevitably delayed after thousands of documents were delivered late by the Southern District of New York. Alvin Bragg, the DA, this is the hush money case, the Stormy Daniels case, says the new documents include materials he requested more than a year ago. I know this might get a little bit close to your resume in this case, Jessica, but is the Southern District of New York to blame here? Well, it certainly looks like their delay in producing these documents um, is the only identifiable uh, source of the present delay, the adjournment that you just alluded to. Um, so I'm scratching my head like many alums of the office and other observers trying to understand what happened here. Um, in wow. the DA's filing, he said he put some blame on Trump um, for having uh, delayed in requesting documents um, uh, as mm -hmm. long as he did. And obviously, if they'd been requested earlier, there could have been follow up earlier. But it does seem like the, the SDNY um, was late um, in turning uh, these documents over. And we just don't have the explanation yet um, for why they held them back, whether there was some um, some, some law enforcement uh, concern about turning them over, we really don't know. And so I want to wait to evaluate the situation yeah. and we see some, both what is in the documents um, and what the explanation is, if one is proffered, for why the delay. But we really are in this extraordinary situation where that trial that we thought was going to go forward 
uh, quite firmly on March 25th is at this point yeah. adjourned to the middle of April. And who knows what will happen uh, beyond that? We're going to wait and see what information is forthcoming mm -hmm. about, about those documents uh, from the SDNY and what the reasons were for not turning it over earlier. That is remarkable, Jessica. We've got less than a minute left. Does that mean then that we could well be in a world in which none of these trials happen before the election? It really is extraordinary. I mean, not too long ago, we thought that Donald Trump was going to be involved in criminal trials one after the other up until Election Day, potentially. And now it really does seem like a possibility that there may be zero trials um, before Election Day. We have to wait and see what the Supreme Court does with respect to the immunity question yeah. in Jack Smith's January 6th case. But at this point, it doesn't look like there's anything that's about to go forward.